I said I would also do some other examples. What I will use is an example with data to the interaction between mink and muskrats. It's a, an old study from 1914 about fur farming in Canada, where you count how many fur skins are traded of two different kinds, or a period from 1850 to 1911. And you can get the data from this particular site here. Basically, what happens is that mink are predators, eat the muskrats. So whenever there are more mink, you have less muskrat. But when you have more muskrats, you will also get more mink. So you have a feedback loop here. And the question is, can we estimate that as a linear time series model? Before doing that, just say a few words about model validation in these um, state-based models, as it, we can also call them. Of course, we look at the autocorrelation function, partial autocorrelation function, as we did for the univariate series. We do that for the residual ser uh, individual series. You can do sign tests, look at the distributions of the residuals. But what you do is that you also look at the cross-correlation of the residuals to kind of look at if there is something more than just the correlation uh, autocorrelation, but also cross-correlation that you need to deal with. So that was what I wanted to just mention before going over to R. And I will load the data here. Set a vector of the years, read the mink data, read the month data. In this case, I'll treat them as time series objects. I won't always do that, but it makes some things behave a little bit different. Columbine them to show you the data here. So what happened is that given that they have frequency here, then you have, you can say the names out here are the actual years where things are from. And if you do a summary of it, you can see the range of things, but what we really want is to look at the values that we get here. Now, since the time series object, it will just show you both graphs here for the time. And well, what to be said here, it looks like the variance for the muskrat is increasing when you get further on, which also coincides with the numbers being greater. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And another thing is, it looks like there are some seasonal, uh, at least some oscillations in the mink population over some years here, but we'll see what happens when we do things. But from up here, since the values does not change so much in numerical value, doing a log transform will not change the variance from we see that much, but it will down here where you have a large difference. We can also get a hint as to that when we look at the muskrat here and look at the range that we get here. If you just look at the first quantile and the third quantile, how they are relative to, to the median. You go 17,000 down to get down from the median down to the first quantile, but you go 26,000 up to get to the third quantile. So it's an asymmetric distribution here even though we should not assume things to be normally distributed here, but if it was stationary, we would probably expect it to be somewhat symmetric at least. So what we will do is that we will do a log transformation to keep going, call that L data. And I'll give the column names here, not just mink and muskrat, but L mink and L muskrat, so that we remind ourselves that we're doing a log transformation. The other thing about doing a log transformation when we do the modeling later on is that when you add something in the log domain, it means that you multiply. So the coefficient that we're estimating are now multipliers. And things become more symmetric. Let's plot the log transform data. What you see now is that the oscillations here in the beginning for the muskrat becomes you can say more of the same magnitude as what happens in the end. So, and we did not change much for the mink up here. So I think we should just stick with this and hope that we're happy. Then let us look at the autocorrelation function of the log transform data. So 
as we also saw in the data, we see some oscillations in the ACF here. We also see it for the Moscat where something happens at around like 10. So we have some kind of an exponential damp here. So how do we deal with that? Let's just, before deciding anything, look at the partial autocollation function. What do we have here? We have definitely something like 1 in both the mink and the muskrat. And then we have, you can say, a little bit in the cross correlation. But having something in like 1 here, maybe also in like 2, but let's focus on like 1 first to, to take steps slowly. What is this appropriate model? It is, of course, an autoregressive model of order 1. Now, the AR function in R can also do multivariate models. You just give it some data and the maximum order. And it actually also has an option to pick maximum likelihood as an estimation method. The only thing that there, which is my preferred method is, the only thing is that it's only implemented for univariate series. So we have to go with the default. It also works as such. It gives you, given a maximum order, it picks the bond model that it finds the best by using AIC. And it is a fifth order model. You can see all the coefficient matrices here. However, when we look at the residual plots or the plot of the collation structure of the original data, we thought that maybe that's maybe overshooting it, but we also have in here, it's an object containing a lot of things. The one thing it chose to use a criteria is the AIC, so let's just look at how different they are in AIC. Everything is relative to model 5, and what we see is that model, models with a fourth order and third order are not that different. So. What happens here? So what we have is not a large decrease to go down here. Of course, when you go to zero order, you get a very large increase in AIC. And also when you get to higher order models, you lose something. But we should also keep in mind that AIC has a small penalty, only two for each parameter. Whereas you use BIC, then you should you using the logarithm of the number of observations and for, uh, as a penalty. So how many observations do we have here? What is the dimension of L data? We have 62. So the log of 62, that's a penalty of 4 for each. So here we use the penalty of 2, but if we instead used just 4, or roughly 4, then this would actually be better, much better, and again, much better. So effectively it means that a second order model, or maybe even a first order model, if you use BIC, would be more appropriate, but we cannot do that here. But we're given a fifth order model. Let's see how the autocollation structure is for that. Well, basically, what we see is that the ACF for the one for the mink is fine, for the muskrat is fine, and the offline angle cross correlation is also there's a little bit of correlation deficit, like zero, but that's it. The partial autocollation function is just calculated for reference. But since there's nothing in the ACF, you should not expect anything in the partial autocollation function. You should also test the distribution assumption. One option is to do the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, you take the residuals normalized by the standard deviation, and use the p norm. We get a p value of 0.27, so it's not significant. And for the other variable, we get a p value of 0.58. Again, not significant, so we cannot reject that things are normally distributed. Now, that's using the AR function. There's a package called VAS that can do all this. That has the same feature that it tries different models. But the default is you just specify which order you want. Now, if you do it, it will give you a slightly different output because it will kind of look at it as a linear model where how the L mink at the current time depends on L mink like 1, L muskrat like 1, L mink like 2, muskrat like 2, and so forth. And then a constant out here for default. And then for the muskrat is the same story as this. 
Now, if we do the summary of this model, you can also see the, how it mimics a linear regression model because the output here, the output table, is effectively the same as a linear regression model. But what you will see here is that a lot of the parameter is here that are non-significant up to that order. We just picked the fifth order as before. It has a function called var select here that you can use. What it will do is that it will use different information criteria. The AIC gives you the lowest one for like four if you compare along this row. This is the lowest one if you use some of the other, say the Schwarz that corresponds to the BIC. Then this row down here, the one that has the lowest value is the first order model. So there are differences here. If you want to look at the definitions of what these are, let's go to the help function for var select. And if you scroll down here, then the definition is written here in a sort of LaTeX, not the nicest formulation, I would say. If you really want to see it, you should look up the documentation for the package vars, but I will skip that right here, right now. So this means that we should either pick an AR1 model or an AR4. I have preference for smaller models, so I will go for the order one model. So what we have here is the L-mink, depends on the L-mink and the Moskrat, and a constant, uh, those two lag one and then a constant. If we again do the summary, we will go up to the linear regression models and we see that for the l Moskrat everything is significant and for the L-mink everything but the constant is significant as it has stars out here. So maybe that was not a bad model. Let's look at how it performs. The VAS model has a lot of test things for testing the autocorrelation function with the Portman 2 test. P-value is not significant. You can also look for heteroscedicity during the ARCH test. Again, the p-value is much greater than 0.05. And then you have different tests for normality. First, the Jacques Perrin test with a high p-value, the skewness, again, high p-value, and kurtosis. So everything here performs nicely. We will do this a few more times so we can wrap this in the function and just get the p-values out because effectively that's what we care about. Let's plot the model object. We get first for log mink here, we have the observations and the predictions and the prediction errors. It's hard to see the ACF of the residuals, but what I can see from here is that they are actually behaving quite well. There's something out of like 10, but that's about it. Let's go for the Muskrat, you can look again up here, predictions and data looks quite well. You have the, once the prediction error is, there's one part out there that is not too nice, and the ACF looks great, and the PACF, you can maybe see that the blue lines are at the outermost point there. So everything looks fine. So if we look again back at all the information that we get out here, we got also the roots of the characteristic polynomial up here that are around 0 0.8. But what we also saw was that it was oscillating, but we did not add a seasonal model to do that. The reason why is that those roots that are reported by the vast model are the modulus here. If I do not say modulus equals false, then I get actually the actual values and we see that these are complex conjugates, which means that we have oscillations because they're complex. So basically what we learned from that as well is having an AR, a bivariate AR1 model, you can have oscillations, whereas if you are in the univariate case, you need at least an AR2 model to get oscillations. Now, what we saw before was there was a constant in there which was significant for one, but not for the other. Var select, you can have a constant, you can also have a trend over time, or you can have both or none. So what is the best model to use? We will focus on SC as our criteria. So we have to 
remember the minus 5.01 here. That's the best value for the constant here. Then we do the trend model for SC, that's like 3. That's minus 4.86, so that's a larger value, so we prefer the constant over the trend. If we do both, the SC gives us 1, that's minus 5.1, whereas for the constant it was minus 5.0, so doing both is better. And if we do none, we get SC being best at like 2, that means we have minus 4.8, which is greater than, so the best model out of these are the both here, I'm using a like 1, let's just repeat this, so I like 1 with both a constant and a trend, let's fit that particular model, look at the summary of this model, what we have here is that we have a trend that is non-significant for the L Moskrat, but everything else for the constant and the others are significant, whereas for the L Mink, the constant is non-significant, but the trend is. So this is one of these places where in this function, as for the AR function, you if you include something, you include it for all states. You cannot say one state has this and the other state has that. And that difference is one of the reasons why I really like the Arima function, because there you can say, I want to estimate that parameter, that parameter, that parameter, but not all the others. So, and thereby get to a model that is smaller and typically more robust. So that was all I wanted to do for now. See you back later. Bye-bye.